Ugh, it's so fucking bad. So, <laughs> this poor car, dude, it feels so bad for this thing. It Jeez. looks like it got puked on. So that right there, what you're looking at is a mixture of emulsified oil, burned oil, PKP, and whatever other dirt from the lot is on there. Um, surprisingly, it still has like almost enough oil to run and it's not mixed with water, which I guess is The good. oil looked clean. Yeah, it looked clean, but there's about five quarts of it all over the rest of the car. So uh, I don't know what I did. I'm pretty sure I heard it pretty bad though. So we're gonna do a leak down test and see exactly how bad I hurt this thing by standing, standing it on the limiter for about three minutes with no water pump. Dude, honestly, I think uh, I think it's totally fine. I don't think there's any issue with it. Well, there, look, it's not totally fine if it <laughs> if it volcanoes oil out of the uh, oil pan. So clearly, we're getting some crankcase pressure from somewhere. Um, I'm hoping it was just built up from having the uh, the crankcase vents blocked off. I think I had almost all of them except for one closed off. So hopefully, it was just from that but I'm not gonna count my eggs until they hatch. So, we'll see. It seems okay, which is hilarious. I told you, dude, it's totally like fine. Se there's like seven foot flames coming out of the engine compartment. So, let's see if I still have a clutch. Yep, still got a clutch. It's okay, we'll find out. Dude, I told you it'd be totally fine. I'm honestly a little flabbergasted that it fired right up. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe not that it fired right up, but like... Maybe just that like it's not misfiring or anything. Oh well, no, okay, so basically the way a leak down test works is you put pressure to the engine and you basically look to see where the air escapes and that tell you what com that tells you what components bad. So for example, if you apply air pressure at 100 psi to cylinder number one and it starts blowing air out the crankcase out the PCV that means you have bad rings if it starts blowing it out of the adjacent cylinder uh, that means that you have a blown head gasket if it starts blowing it out the intake manifold that means you have a bent valve if it starts blowing it out the exhaust manifold that means you have a bent exhaust valve and that in a nutshell is how a leak down test works I'm guessing it's either a head gasket or I just had bad luck got it really hot, the ring gap opened up, pressurized the crankcase and shot it out. So that's my bet, because it actually runs pretty good, surprisingly. It looks like dog shit, but it runs pretty good. Um, anyway, so that's what we're doing right now. But, in other news, cool things. If we get to 5,000 subscribers in the next month, we're going to take everybody from the shop, we're gonna go pick cars out of our junkyard, or whatever you wanna call it, and we're going to crash them into each other until there's only one survivor. Demolition Derby, guys. Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your grandma, tell your aunt. Uh, yeah, Demolition Derby. Let's freaking do this, boys. Freaking send it. Go out for a rip there, bud. So, we just pulled all the plugs out, and uh, according to my AFR gauge on the plugs, this thing was actually running pretty good. I don't hate that at all. Little golden brown, that's what you want to see. Sweet. Not white, not black. That's what you want. Yeah. Ooh, look at that! Hey, we're good. We're good. <laughs> that ain't Once, bad oh, at all. Shh, shh. Right back nope. here. Oh, she got a little blow by. A little blow by. <laughs> <laughs> that's good though. That's pretty good yeah, though. Good I'm, I'm happy with that. It's a junkyard motor, so. That's cool how good of a, like, example that was for the crankcase right. pressure because a lot of times you can't get that good of a visual well, on that and i also plugged all of the other ones that's <laughs> the only where the only place it can i escape. usually take a tissue and i'll hold it over the oil cap and see if the tissue starts moving yeah. so i did a leak down test on an x5 once 
And uh, I used, yeah, I used to use the lighter because the air will blow the lighter flame really sensitive. Well, the problem with that is if you forget to unhook the fuel pump and the injectors, it still sprays fuel. So here I am, put air in a cylinder that's pushing fuel, like atomized fuel out, and I'm like, yada, 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 click, bam, and it just blew the whole lighter to pieces, blew the all sorts of plastic apart, <laughs> blew my arm backwards, burned all the art. Dude, it was awful. <laughs> so now I use a tissue instead of a lighter. <laughs> I'm not doing that. The seats are the best. I love this car. I just want to drive it. I just want to go fast. That's all I want to do. Spin some tires, lot some fires. I already lit the fire, so I guess there's only one thing left to do. Spin some tires. Hello, my name is Mikhail. Welcome back to Slav Garage. You light the LS on fire? No problem. We fix, huh? Check out. Very good, yes? Oh, yeah. Listen to that. A little bit of blow by? Just for safety. Just got done doing the compression, or no, leak down test. And good news. Cylinders two, three, eight, five, and seven are like beyond good. Well, there goes the boosty boy. Um, it was all the way, it went all the way into the green and then like even into the white on those ones. One, four, and five were at least halfway into the green. So this motor, even though I lit it on fire, pinned it on the rev limiter, rev limiter, overheated the crap out of it, and it's a junkyard motor, it's like pretty solid. So there was like a little blow by. It was a little bit, but like. Who cares when the numbers are good? the shit out of it, so. Yeah. I feel like that's a win. So, I'm chuffed as nuts as the, uh, the <laughs> Aussies say. <laughs> the Aussies and the Kiwis say. So, anyway, yeah, that's freaking awesome. So, we don't have to do anything other than clean it off and, like, actually do this entire thing properly. Yeah, let's send it, boys. We're gonna, I think, get this back to life. I'm gonna put a new power steering pump and a new belt on it. Uh, if I can figure out how to make the lines work to the rack, I'm gonna do that. But I don't know how possible that is, but we'll see, I might. Okay, so three power steering pumps later, uh, I think I've got this finally replaced. Apparently on my brackets, you can only use the truck pump. I forgot about that since I built this car in April. Uh, but yeah, so we need the old Saginaw truck pump, which is what this is. And then I'm gonna take this line. This is a factory uh, Chevy 1500 truck line, which goes to that pump. And hopefully it clears my brackets. I don't know, but we'll see. So we're gonna take the line, put the, high, or put the threaded end in the pump, and then we're gonna take this down, and uh, sorry ahead of time, John. We're gonna try to bribe John Vigil into welding this fitting onto the end of it, like that. So that way it goes from BMW-ness to Chevy-ness, and then we've got a, a CMW, power steering. So power steering, steering rack. Yeah, pump, rack, this. That's Sweet. what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get the pump on there, see if the line clears. If the line clears, and see if it's long enough. If it's long enough, I'm gonna make sure that this 21 millimeter banjo is the right one. If it's not, we're gonna go steal one off another car and take it to John with some mountain tucks. Stick around to see uh, how, oh. So, uh, after a little bit of running around, look at this, look at this. We got a belt, we got a water pump, we got an alternator, we got a power steering thing. I uh, got the new power steering pump on and I modified it. I chopped, uh, here, let's see. I did some, I did some chicanery and hopefully it works. Maybe it won't, I don't know, we'll see. But I basically modified the pump by cutting off the GM fitting because it was literally inside my exhaust. Like that's not even an exaggeration. Like it went inside of the exhaust because it's just a dump. Um, so I cut this off and kind of bent it out. So I've got enough to hose clamp on. It's just the return, so it's not pressurized. So if I hose clamp the shit out of it, it should be fine. I just got to put this little guy on and then we're going to do a 90 and hose clamp it. So there's going to be like one, two, three, four, five, six hose clamps on this return line. So that's cool. Don't worry about that. Shh. Build quality, mint. Tens, Tens, always. Actually in the Coast Guard it would be sevens. Anyway, uh, yeah, so once that's done, I think it not only will have power, oh, also 
Hamish and I did a bunch of running around and I flirted with an old lady and she was mean but then she was cool because she was like you're flirting with me so that was cool no but anyway they're gonna make us a, uh, a line that goes from the Saginaw power steering pump bubble fitting or she called it a bump fitting don't know why but anyway it's going from the bump fitting to and basically it's gonna be an adapter. So we're gonna have an adapter that goes into the Saginaw pump and then it's gonna have just a regular flare fitting on it. And then in the rack, it's gonna be, it's gonna be our normal banjo fitting, but they're gonna cut basically the end off of it and braze another flare fitting onto it. So then that way I have the adapters and if I ever blow this line up or like, you know, power steering melt, or I'm sorry, not the power steering, the exhaust melts it cause it's super sketchy. Uh, I can go get another line made for like pretty cheap and it's only 12 inches long so it's like it's good to go so we should be in business today like we might actually be able to burn some tires and uh not light some fires you know what i'm saying so what happened i got a line look flirting paid off old janine or whatever the fuck her name is janine Gar garofalo all right so power steering set here let me get up let me get up okay so Rack side, boom. Power steering side, boom. Line, boom. It's gonna do things. And then if I ever need to change things or do different things, I just literally just get another one of these. And then I still have my little Adapty boys. Perfect. So we're good. And it's just a JIC, whatever the f fuck that is, fitting. No big deal. We got it. Oh, and then we got these little magic mics. I didn't know which one I needed, so I got an elbow and a straight one. So we're gonna make it work. By the next 30 minutes or so, this bad mamma jamma is gonna have all of the things that it needs to be driving. What happened? Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> I uh, pulled the dipstick, and then I pulled this little block heater guy out, which is kind of cool, I didn't know I had that. Uh, and then all the water went into the oil pan. Great. Yeah, see? From here into here. Perfect. And the oil pan was like, mmm, thanks. <laughs> I actually am not sh convinced that a bunch of water got into that. Because I felt how full the oil was, which means the water would have just hit and just... What's your threshold for uh, how much oil you want in your oil? Water contamination? Yeah. Uh, about a zero. Okay. So... Yeah. Well, wait, hold on. If it just got in the dipstick, couldn't you put a turkey baster in there and suck out the top? No, I don't think it even got in. That's something that it was so full that I don't think the water could even get in. So you're gonna send it? Just gonna send it, bro. I capped off the other PCV, so we'll just have infinite crankcase pressure. And then- Wait, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when I was power washing, we'll pull it off here in a minute, but. Oh no, I took it off when you were power washing. Um, observe, belt, radiator. Power steering is functional. New power steering pump. It did some things. So now we're gonna start it and see if I hit A, have power steering, or B, the alternator does in fact charge. And all that stuff. Cool. So let's open the door up a little bit so we will die. You know, fresh air, check. Stonks. Check. LS1. Finish what I started, AKA dead.
it needs a lot of things before I can bounce it off the limiter again like I did before. Chiefly, a radiator fan, a working water pump, uh, a new gasket in the water pump, working suspension, tires, you know, everything. All right, well guys, uh, thank you for watching me try to kill my car again. I honestly can't believe this thing is still alive. I really can't. And it still does burnouts. Well, it's I mean, bleeding. Obviously it still does burnouts, but it still does burnouts. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you so much for your support. Like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you wanna see. Uh, and we got a bunch of Patreon stuff going on that you guys can get, be a part of. So please get a hold of that if you like what we're doing. And uh, yeah, let's keep wrenching.